Hello and welcome to this lecture where we're going to be looking at an overview of the top half of the features in Massive X. So we're going to be looking at the oscillators, the noise, the filters and a few more features as well. There's a lot more to cover in Massive X but I just want to show you a brief overview of some of the main features so you can start making sounds. So this course was actually taken from my Massive X guide. To gain full access to this course be sure to check out the link in the description below. Okay so let's get started. First of all we're going to go up to the preset menu up here. We can just click to select this and we're going to go to quick start and then choose Massive X. If you select Massive X blank and you play some notes on your MIDI keyboard you won't actually hear any sound. The reason that is is because the routing hasn't been set up yet. We will look at routing later on but for now just to get started let's just select this one Massive X and we will hear the default sound. So starting from the left we have pitch and this will affect the global pitch. Obviously here we can increase and decrease in semitones and scents. And we can double click on this for it to go back to zero. Going down we have glide. We can just click to turn this on. So this can be useful if you want to glide between different notes. So now I'm just going to play two legato notes with glide turned off. And now let's turn glide on. And obviously there you can hear the pitch gliding between the two notes. We can increase this glide with the glide time. Or decrease it. Okay going along we have the oscillator section. So this is where you start building the sound. By default we have two oscillators. Oscillator 1 and Oscillator 2. Let's first have a look at Oscillator 1. Here we have the gain for the oscillator. So if we have this all the way down we won't actually hear any sound. And if we increase this we'll be able to hear the first oscillator. We have a drop down menu up here which allows us to actually choose our oscillator. The default one is the basics. So this is sine, triangle, saw, square. But we have a few different ones we can select as well. But for right now we're just going to leave it on this basic one. And we can actually scroll through those different waves with this slider here. So from here we can actually cycle through the wavetable with this circle dial. But right now I'm just going to leave this on sine wave. We also have a pitch control for this oscillator. So for each oscillator we have a separate pitch control. Okay going down we have a few different warp modes for the oscillator. Right now it's on standard. So each of these warp modes just cycle through the wavetable in different ways. For example mirror mode cycles part way through the wavetable and then back again rather than cycling all the way through the wavetable. So going along we have oscillator 2 which has the same controls as oscillator 1 and obviously we can blend oscillator 2 with oscillator 1 with these controls here. So let's just change this to sawtooth. And there you can hear oscillator 2 obviously sounds different to oscillator 1 even though it has the same controls. Going along we have the noise oscillator where we can add two different colours of noise into the mix. By default we have white noise and pink noise and we have these faders here to add the noise into the mix. And we can change the pitch of the noise as well with these pitch dials down here. We can also click on these noises and change them to something else. As you can see there's a lot of different noise colours available so have an experiment with these but some of the ones I like are actually in the environment tab. For example bubbles sounds pretty interesting. And there's another one called ice water which I quite like. But like I said go through and experiment with these. And going along we have the filter section. We can click on the filter up here to change the different type of filter. For example let's just choose scanner. 
We also have different types of filter here, for example, two different low pass, a band pass, and a peak. Then going along, we have resonance, which adds a peak just before the cutoff point. And then going along, we have keyboard tracking. So if this is turned all the way up, the cutoff frequency will move with the notes that I play on my MIDI keyboard. But if you turn it down, it just has a lesser effect on the cutoff frequency. But if you turn this all the way down, the cutoff frequency is static. I'm just now going to play some high notes on my keyboard. And now some lower notes. And you can hear the filter cutoff has moved with the pitch. We have some more controls such as gain and frequency modulation down here. So frequency modulation will actually modulate the cutoff frequency. We'll have to set this up later, but you can pair this with a modulator to actually allow you to modulate the filter cutoff. And then going along we have gain, which allows us to affect the intensity of the filter. Going along we have insert effects. Here we have three different inserts where we can choose different effects. So let's just click on A. And here we have a few different controls. A common one to use might be distortion. Here you can choose the type of distortion. And then the mix. So how much of it is blended in with your original signal. And then going down we have drive, which allows us to increase the amount going into the distortion without actually making it louder. And then going down we have HQ, which affects the quality of the processing, but it might use up more CPU, but may sound a little better. So remember, we have three different inserts here we can use. Then going along we have the amp stage, where we can affect the global settings for the level, the pan, and also the feedback. So feedback just feeds the signal back into the input, and there's an option here to also apply a high pass filter to this feedback. And going across we have three global effects. X, Y, and Z. So here we have effects like flanger, phaser, and reverb, and these are effects you could use to sweeten the sound. Let's just add some reverb. And you can hear there that this synth has more of a sense of space now. We could add another one. For example, let's choose phaser. So we have a lot more to look at in the synth. I just wanted to make this lecture to give you a quick overview of some of the main settings. So thank you for watching this video. This is just a really quick start guide into Massive X. There's a lot more to cover. There's all the routing and modulation stuff as well that we haven't looked at in this video. We cover this in our Massive X guide though. To gain full access to this course, just check out the link in the description below. So thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon.